Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Hello, it's good to be back. I took a short break for the holidays, and during that time, something exciting happened. I decided to go back to school to obtain my master's in secondary education. I realized that creating content and teaching others about art history is really what I want to do for my career. So I wanted to thank my amazing listeners for helping me come to this realization. Anyway, here we go. This episode marks the start of season six. We are now in the 18th century. Pretty crazy considering that we started at 30,000 years before present. The season is kicking off with the Rococo period and the work that started it all. It's called The Pilgrimage to Cicera and was painted by Jean-Antoine Watteau in 1717. It features a fête galante or a courtship party. This work is a light and airy celebration of love. To learn more about it, then keep on listening. This piece represents a romantic fantasy crafted for the aristocratic class. A group of finely dressed men and women are milling around on a hill. Small cupids fly around, casting their love spells onto the couples. It's clearly working because the closer the people are to the water, the more intimately they are entwined. The landscape of this work is green and lush. Both the sky and water are shades of baby blue. Watteau chose to use soft pastel tones to create a romantic air to the work. This is compounded by a statue of Venus on the right-hand side. She's covered in roses, showing her power over all things love. The name of this piece, The Pilgrimage to Cythera, is another nod to romance. Cythera was believed to be the birthplace of Venus in Roman mythology. Overall, this piece is one of happiness and affection. As I mentioned earlier, this piece represents a fête galante. This is French for a courtship party. In the 18th century, the noble class really enjoyed their parties. This type was no exception. It was an offshoot of a fête champrette, or garden party. In essence, aristocrats would dress up in their finest clothing to go outside and be flirtatious. Fascinatingly, this word was invented specifically for Watteau in this work. The French Royal Academy, more on them later, were so taken by this piece that they knew it had to be admitted. But the problem was, it didn't fit into an existing category. This piece wasn't quite historical, but it wasn't really mythological either. So they came up with this new term and used it to admit to their rank. Next, we're going to talk about the art scene in the 18th century. But first, let's take a quick break. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break to tell you about what software I use to bring Accessible Art History, the podcast, to life. It's called Anchor, and it's truly made a difference in my mission of making art history fun and easy to learn about. Although I'd always thought about adding a podcast to my content creation, the thought scared me. I'm not an audio engineer or a tech guru, but Anchor makes it so easy. You can use their website or app to record, edit, and spice up your audio with music. They partner with you to make your podcast a success. Not only do they take care of distributing it to all the major platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, But they even match you up with sponsors with no minimum listenership required. It makes creating a podcast easier than I honestly thought possible. But the best part, it's absolutely free to use. As someone who is in the beginning stages of content creation, I'm so thankful to have a free platform that helps me create a quality podcast. If you want to get started on your own podcast, simply go to anchor.fm, that's A-N-C-H-O-R-F-M, or download their app on your preferred app store. Thanks so much for listening. All right, now that we're back, let's take a dive into France during the Rococo period. Founded in 1648, the Académie Royale de Peinture et de Sculpture, Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture, was the premier art institution in France. It was essentially the only name in the art world, and membership meant access to better patrons, exclusive commissions, and more money. The goal of this institution was to elevate artists above simple artisans, especially when it came to the royal court. 
When the academy was founded, the artistic school of thought was split between two camps. The first was the Rubenist, followers of Peter Paul Rubens, a past podcast subject, and they believed that the basis of great art was in the use of color. The Poussinites, followers of Nicolas Poussin, thought it was actually the lines of a work that made it worthwhile. It's important to note that the pilgrimage of Sathira follows the Rubens school of thought, but not closely enough to be admitted under that standard. The French Royal Academy dominated the art scene during the second half of the 17th century. This change was brought by a man named Charles Lebrun. He worked closely with the monarchy and is most famous for being the head decorator of the magnificent Palace of Versailles. His guidance helped shape the art of this period until the French Revolution sought to eliminate all traces of the monarchy. During the 18th century, the French monarchy was at the height of its power. It was known as the Ancient Regime, or Old Order. The king ruled absolutely over the people. He was at the top of the social pyramid. Everyone else was divided into three separate estates. The first two held a bit of power, the nobility and the clergy, but the majority of the population, essentially the common people, had no power whatsoever. They are most commonly known as the third estate. This work was painted at the height of this absolute monarchical system. It was technically painted during the reign of Louis XV, but he was only five years old at the time. He was a great-grandson of the Sun King Louis XIV, who had died three years previously. Both Louis XIV and Louis XV are famous for their connection to the Palace of Versailles. To history, it marks the pure opulence of the Rococo era. The elaborate gardens, gilded design, and expansive size all represented the reckless spending of the monarch. They lived as if money had no meaning, while the majority of their kingdom suffered under the burden of heavy taxation. Out of this opulence came a unique artistic style called Rococo. This name derives from Rocial, which is French for rebel or rock. According to Artnet, it's a reference to both the shell work in the garden grottos, as well as the pattern on walls common in this period. The Rococo style is characterized by soft pastel colors and blurred hazy lines. This was supposed to convey elegance and romance. It represented the lighter, brighter, and happier side of life. This is in direct contrast to the dark and emotional art of the previous period, Baroque. This is covered extensively in last season, so make sure to check it out. Despite the fun and frivolous nature of this art, it didn't stay in style for long. This was because the Western world experienced an intellectual revolution called the Enlightenment. The period would lead to new ideas about life and understanding the world. One of the direct consequences of this was the French Revolution. Artists had to steer clear of art that was so strongly associated with the monarchy, if they wanted to keep their heads. The Rococo period started with the artist of this work. His name was Jean-Antoine Watteau. He was born to a middle-class family in 1684. Not much is known about his early life. His career truly began in 1702, when Watteau moved to Paris. While there, he began to work for the artist Claude Andron III. This led Watteau access to Rubens' famous Marie de Medici cycle. The use of color inspired Watteau and led to the development of his unique Rococo style. Our historians know that Watteau's work was beloved and well-received due to the Royal Academy creating an entirely new category for him. But his personal life remains a bit of a mystery. Watteau died in 1621 at the age of only 36. There is some evidence that he suffered from tuberculosis and that contributed to his early demise. Some of his other famous works, which you can see on the blog, include Messatino, 1717-20, Pierrot, 1718-19, and The Robber of the Sparrow's Nest, painted in 1712. Rococo art was a new style of art that celebrated the brighter parts of life. It fills the viewer with hope about the possibility of love. Personally, I think it's a great piece to start 2021 and season 6 off with. Make sure to tune in next week to hear about another Rococo work. I'll be discussing The Swing by Jean Onier Fragonard. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.